Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Maybe one day. Good afternoon. Today is the 22nd of March, and this is part six of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2024 Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show here at the NEC in Birmingham. I do apologize in advance for any incorrect information. If I fall over, if I make a right hash of it, if I get interrupted by announcements, I'm afraid, but just the way that it goes on this channel. So we're at the Footman James Barn Find section here, and we've just come across this 1985 Fiat Uno Turbo. I can't remember the last time I saw um, one of these pre facelift ones outside of a show. This one was a Fiat press car originally, apparently. Earliest Uno Turbo IE in the country. It actually, for a car that had such a bad reputation for rust back in the day, doesn't look too bad. Yeah, Turbo IE. Fiat Motor Sales London on the plate. That's um, fantastic. I'll have a look at this sort of crazy dash as well whilst we're here. There we go. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, there we go. And we've got a um, press article there. Wonderful. That's certainly a find, isn't it? Morris Minor, 1952. This is like right on the cusp of being an, an MM and then the uh, Series 2, I think. I just don't really know what to, what to say about this. It's, um, paintwork is it's really bad. Is that actually going to be able to be restored? Goodness gracious me. <laughs> Practical Classics have sort of put their thing on it. That has lived a life, hasn't it, that? Goodness me. That's going to take a while to clean that bird muck off it, isn't it? And then we're going to look at this Ford Transit minibus. Gosh, this is the sort of thing my mother used to drive in the late 80s when she was um, a lecturer at a sixth form college. Goodness gracious me. Wow. And we've got, so it's like a, some um, SS2, okay, so the company that became Jaguar. Is that a real bird in the back? It's probably a fake bird, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fake cockerel. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is even worse than the Morris Minor. Look at this, this is insane. Oh my god. Um, it's a 1934. Some parts have been removed. Yeah. Goodness gracious me. Found it on an internet auction site. Uh, yeah, well, okay. Oh, more Morris Miners. I thought you weren't allowed to have more than one of the same type of car, but... Uh, well, this chap's got two, and if that was an MM, these are the early ones with the low light. That's a 1950. Um, yeah. Wow, okay. To be honest, like, the left hand one doesn't look too bad. This is like a spares car or something. Well, I remember this thing, whatever this is. It's obviously been modified at some point in its life. Yeah, it's a 1929 Dodge Panel Hot Rod. Interesting. And then we've got a stag with a hard top. Ooh, my goodness me, that's rotten. Wow. What's that lived underwater or something? Wow. M25 Classics have supplied, but they, they sort of find cars like this, don't they? This is a 74, so it's a series, sorry, Mark II, this one. Um, the corrosion is just, I don't really know what you would do with that. I mean, the stags aren't actually that 
expensive in some ways and so yeah <laughs> and we've got a, is this a Chrysler 180 I don't remember if I've ever seen one of these before this one cost two sorry 300 pounds in 2008 Wow. Not a straightforward project, no. Where on earth do you find parts for a 1978 Chrysler 180? <laughs> Second Cortina Crusader I've seen at the show. And this one is in worse condition than the other one. So yes, it's run out model for the Cortina. They made quite a lot of these actually because a lot of people didn't like the look of the new Sierra so they saw it coming and they had tons of these in the, uh, in the showroom so people bought these instead. It's two litres so it's the most powerful of the Crusaders they did. Um, yeah, and 25 Classics again. Small on the road, off the road to the 1990s, try to silver. Excellent, okay. Ooh, what? I could smell this. Gosh, what's that mean? It's got a floor. Not really, no. It's not got much of a floor left at all. Um, it's a 1953 Lanchester 14. Lanchester, I think, died quite soon after that so it's a very rare car indeed I I don't know what the heck they're gonna gonna be able to do with that and then we've got Austin Princess uh, 135 so it's not a sheer line to Princess okay so it's a 52 this one previously sold at an auction Well, yes, yeah, not too bad compared to some other stuff we've actually seen. Obviously, strong old cars, these. Um, 24.50 and 25 Classics. I don't think I quite fancy that, viewers. What I'm more interested in my, myself is actually this, this Ford Mondeo. What has happened to this? Oh, yeah, the arches have been welded before. And they're going to have to be done again. But it does have... Some nice leather trim and things. It's a 97. What's happened to this? Right. It just needs to be welded, okay. Lived in a hedge for 10 years. Okay. Standard Vanguard with a beetle back. I used to call it back in the day. What's happened to this one? Actually, 49. So it came off the road in about 1982. It's been stored since then. Let's go into the middle section. <laughs> Oh, Towns Hustler, 1986. This doesn't actually look as bad as a lot of the other stuff in here, does it? I mean, we can see a little bit of rust there. Force 4 model. Interesting. Based on Vanden Park. Ooh, dear, that bit's gone as well, hasn't it? Okay, maybe this bit of the back's not as good. Yeah, Van der Plaar logo. Interesting. So the donor car was 300 Van der Plaar. And um, Nizetta. Local plate to Coventry, actually, AC. It's a 59. Oh, just applied a limited spark. Okay, that makes sense. It's taken off the road in the 60s. It's buried in a garage. It doesn't actually look too bad I suppose and there is some rust on it but it's not as bad as some of the other stuff here 
come back to that Astra at last. 1950 Cadillac flower car. Goodness me. Um, <laughs> I would not want to drive that, viewers. No, thank you. Ooh, a Mazda 323. What's happened to this? Ooh. Like 91 323. Three door model. Uh, 1.3 SE. I was involved in an accident. So it was repaired and it's rusty. Plenty more work needed. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can vote for your favourite on these and I don't I don't know yet. I think we'll head towards the the Astra and then we'll see. I like Mark 1 Astra actually, they're quite nice to drive for a car of their age. And then we've got um, Charlie Powell's 1978 Ford Escort Factory Sport. Just doing some filming for Classic Swab there with Steph from my driver Classic. So we'll uh, leave it. I actually know that's Steph's own phone, so obviously they're doing the interview there. This is um, a facelift of one of these. I mean, it's probably worth a lot of money in its own. It's a Mark II Escort 2 door because they always are. So last one here, we can leave a proper channel to get on with their filming, I suppose the shambolic ones like mine. 1984 Vox Lastra. What a late one for the limits. So they, they, they were replaced in um, they were replaced in 84. It's February 84 and L. And it has the 1.6 um, S engine, which is quite fast, actually. It's quite original. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it needs tidying up. It's a little bit frilly, but it's not too bad. They're such nice cars driving. They don't need power steering or anything. They are um, rather interesting, actually. That was entertaining, wasn't it? Yes. Switching other stuff here, like, like this um, no Avantime. Yes, it is Avantime, not Avantime, despite um, having a French degree viewers, it is Avantime. To look at these doors. It's just the way they open is crazy. I mean, a window open like this is really handy because you can see the whole kind of process, how that works. This one's an auto. I wonder what engine this has got in it. They, they, could, they made it as a sort of four cylinder turbo and also a V6. Don't know, personal play. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's a 2003 and it is a V6. Fantastic. That's uh, what we like. And then we've got the uh, we've got the um, Yugo Sana that was at Rustival. I believe this belongs to Mr. Pink. Yeah, 1991. The GL, which is the um, highest specification car, in comparison with um, the one that Ian Seabrook used to have. This one looks remarkably tidy, actually. We've got a Vauxhall Frontera. Be careful about this, because it might have an engine in it that we can't discuss on the channel. Very late one, 2004 was the last year for the Frontera in this country. No, oh, got caught out, viewers, I'm sorry. That was a bad, bad thing. I should have kept my mouth shut when we got in trouble. We're right, similar to SS1. Uh, is this a, a Nissan engine? It's a turbo, it would be. Let's so look at the back before we fall over things and trip over things. That's 1600, so that'll be, I think it's a Ford CVH engine in one of these. I thought these are very interesting little cars. Oh, I forgot the spare wheel was stored under there. Wonderful. So whilst we're in this hall, we might as well have a look at some Scirocco's and Corrado's on the Scirocco register stand. 
I wonder if I'll get any information sheets for you, or if I'll just have to sort of blag it and guess badly, which is what happened last time. Schrocco GTX on the Pirelli wheels. Uh, 1987 88, yeah, GTX. I like the smoked out rear lights on these later Scirocco's. Then, um, I believe this is a Mark 63 plate on this, but that's, that's not an original plate, is it? Um, Mark 1, though, I think this is. Oh, there we go, that's better. An information sheet, 1981, 1.8 litres. So this will be. Um, this will be quite a late one for the Mark 1. I think the um, Mark 2s were launched later on the same year, actually. And here's another Mark 2. Oh, it's a very late one. I think, I think they finished in 92. 91, 92 on a J. So that makes uh, perfect sense. I just wondered why the Corrado and Scirocco overlapped, but, you know, by 1995, both of them had finished. It's a shame. This might be the best specification Scirocco for me ever. Scirocco Storm VR6, 1995 only at being on an end. Dark green with a beige leather interior. Which is a manual as well. Now that's very nice to you. Um, if there's anything that's going to get me into the front of my own Corrado, that would probably be it. Two more quite late Corrados. 9495 VR6. And then this one, which um, is also a VR6. We're doing well today, viewers. If you're into the VR6 engine, that's uh, three of them basically on the same stand or stand next to each other. It's a 94, that one. And we'll look at the, the golfs. Someone very handily has, has lined them up in an order of age. Mark 1, Mark 2, and a Mark 3. Golf CL, this is a facelift, 82 to 83. Very similar, probably, to the Mark 1 Jetta that parents have, which is about the same age as this, so it's long gone, obviously. Imagine that one being right-hand drive. They're just sort of show plates on that, and that's sort of 80, 586 uh, Mark 2 well, GTI. I think this, yes, Mark III GTI. Don't know what year it is, is it? It's called the Colour Concept Edition. An interior like this. It's one of the later ones, just by the sort of font on the, um, on the dials and things. 1985 Audi Quattro. That one looks like it's been in the barn as well. This is a barn find area, it's just over there. Uh, that looks interesting. Then this is what we look like when they're pretty much done. <laughs> Where's the American spec headlamps on that? See, it's um, it's not got the wheel on the left, so it's probably a UK car, but I think most of the American spec headlamps. That is, uh, it's rather nice, that is. As a member of the Volvo Owners Club viewers, um, I thought I might as well go and look at their stand. What have we got here? A uh, very nice 850 T5 by the look of it. It's a 95 850 T5 Auto and it's done 289,000 miles, so it's barely run in. The police specification ones of these traffic cars were also automatic, uh, apart from the early um, demo ones. Nice Amazon here, kind of like a sort of rat look. What if this is like a vinyl wrap or something? Yeah, it's a vinyl wrap, so no worries about corrosion there. So we've got the um, information sheets here, which is very handy. So, um, to actually say which one this is, this is a presumably like a. Um, 68 or 69 or something. Another Amazon here. Sixty-five, yep, yeah, let's see. That's looking very nice as well. Very easy engine to work on obviously in these. And the later um, red block engines too. 
this one is very similar to the car used in the Saint film. I think this is Garnet Red, this C70. Obviously, I used to have a C70 T5 myself. And uh, here we go. Well, So it was launched in 96. They, they, they kind of started selling them in about 97. I think the second film came out in 97 as well. This one, um, yeah, it's a very, it's a very early one. The same wheels as the one I had, but mine was not in as good condition. Unfortunately on this one, the, um, <laughs> the engine hasn't decided to develop massive oil leaks in it, which is what can happen with T5 engines, unfortunately. But yeah, very nice indeed. So looking at the sheet, it's actually a similar age to the one I had, it's an early 98, this one. Um, there we go, yeah, there's all the, um, there's all this sort of information on there, but I, you know, I've reviewed plenty of C70s on my channel, I've offered another one as well. Um, will I own another one? Probably not, but um, I'll definitely own another Volvo. <laughs> I like Volvo, I've had three in the space of just over a year, so I do like them. Um, 1970 800E, so it's the last of its kind of shape because the later ones were the um, ES, which had the famous kind of glass hatch coupe at the back. Well, they're 164, these are pretty good cars, really. These uh, it's 1973, this one. The way you can normally tell is the later ones, the door handles, which look like ones on a 240, and then the, the 145, which is well, uh, how do we put this? Um, low specification, but very similar again. Looks to a 240. 240s, well, they've got different engineering, really, in many ways, but they are related to these. And of course, 240 lasted until 1993. Very long production run for this sort of shape. This one is uh, 72, the four cylinder as opposed to the 164, the six cylinder. Another Amazon, very, very, very late one, 1970, so that's the last of these. Volvo had this knack, and the same as Fiat, they just, they kept the cars in production for a long time and then replaced them and kept the preceding model in production. Um, Fiat did the same with a lot of cars too. PV544, never sold over here officially, but there are quite a few in this country, all left-hand drive. Again, the, um, this one would have a similar engine to the Amazon, 63, so the Captain America is still 65. We're talking of the uh, 240s, here is a 240. It's probably like a GL or something, this one. Let's have a look at the information sheet. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's a DL, okay, so it's actually the base spec one. DL Auto. Um, December 83 it registered. It's only done 47,000 miles, which, uh, you know, for a Volvo is not an awful lot, really. I normally put the Saabs and Volvos together, so we'll look at the Saabs as well. I also like Saabs. 9.5 here. Let's check the rev counter. Oh, I can't see. No, okay. Oh, two three turbo, okay. Excellent. 2004, and then um, a nice 93 Cabrio pre facelift, second generation 93. I presume this is a Petra one, yeah, it is. It's um, rather clean. It's, it's what I drove in 2021 was nice, but that's, uh, that's even nicer that one. And we've got a very interesting trailer combination going on here with this original generation 900 convertible. Uh, 900i and a 900i. <laughs> right, let's see if we can get through here without tripping over anything. Yes, there we go. Oops. Didn't fall over quite there, viewers, but I did almost trip. That was close. Okay. Um, the more specification thing. Stick on with this, at least. Let's uh, go this way, not fall over anything here. That's um, that's best, isn't it? Don't fall over anything. On oh, aero, must be a petrol one. Facelifted uh, 95 original generation, 2006. 
Ooh. It's got a very nice interior, Pierce. A bit had wood, but I don't think so by this stage. Won't run really into stuff like that. You can see the uh, sort of later and the earlier ones next door to each other here. I'll just give you an idea of what they look like. Let's check something here, viewers. Right, glad I checked, viewers. I've been caught out so many times um, already. Better be careful. Ooh, this is interesting. A 99 GLE. So from the late 70s, this one. Say, so, uh, what's the 77? There we go. You know, Saabs do actually rust, but not as bad as um, some others. So, this, the only 77 GLE left in Britain, let's put it the garage in 2022. Ooh, gosh, that looks um, that looks pretty amazing. Look at the colour of the interior. It's hard to see really, actually, what colour this sort of was. It's like a purple, isn't it? <laughs> this um, 96 V4 is in rather different condition. 71 V4 tur uh, turbo. Wow, okay, yes it is. <laughs> the old um, Ford Taunus V4 engine in that. And then we've got um, older Saab here. Which one is this? Gran Turismo 850. Oh, this will have the um, air cool engine, it won't it? A bit different from those. Um, I presume that's a. So 96, but uh, 64 it is. I think the V4 came in about 66, 67. It's a 93. It's quite an old one, this. He was talking, I'll give him to you. Yeah, 93B, 1959. Wonderful. 302 stroke engine as well. We can't not also look at the Volvo Enthusiast Club stand. So this is um, a P2 V70R. It is a 2004. These are stupidly quick. I've got a really, really powerful engine in them. Super powerful. Then this is something that uh, it's a bit less powerful. 240 GL. It's very similar to the one that my mother had. Um, hers is a late 89 and 90 model year. This is a 1989 and it's done a lot of miles. It's not quite made it to a million but it's on the way. 832561. Of course it will make it. Good old uh, red block engine. No cat in there, I don't think. Wonderful. And then a couple of 1800s, or the first one is a P1800. This is the original TV Saint car. Is this actually 71 DX6? That's really crazy. This is the actual one. I have seen this before, actually. There you go. If you, there's Sir Roger there back in the early 60s and there we go signed Madeline Smith one of Roger Moore's friends Diana Rigg we go on but uh, you know there we go this one here is more similar to the one that was used in the later to the same there were depending on how you count it I think it's from four or six series of it depends how you say but if this is the real car, N NUV647E, there's also NUV648E, there are two of them at the same time. Wow. That is really crazy. That's a real one. I'm not entirely sure that it is representing it as a different, different one. But yeah, I have, the, have these wheels, sort of, sort of mini light ones. Yeah, that's it's, it's recreation. It's a different plate. 
It's still wonderful though. And then we've got a big truck in here, but we don't really talk about big trucks to be viewers. I think this comes quite a lot to the shows here. It's a 73. And we've also got a little one here with a little friend in it. Isn't that nice? Right, that is it for today. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment below. And we'll see you again tomorrow for part seven, where we'll be even more incorrect information.